Hola amigos, we are here in Gay Oaxaca ready to explore this colorful colonial gym. Join us as we show you the sights and of course eat and drink our way through what is known as Mexico's culinary capital. Before we get started, we are two gay expats. I'm Andy. And I'm Trey. And on this channel, we highlight our gay adventures all around the world. We are currently in the beautiful city of Oaxaca, Mexico, in the pedestrian-friendly Centro neighborhood. The Centro neighborhood of Oaxaca is characterized by cobblestone streets, colorful buildings, and simply oozes old world charm. In terms of attractions, the number one thing to do in Oaxaca is to see its most famous church, Santo Domingo de Guzman. There are often weddings here, as well as colorful performers out front, so it's a lively place both day and night, as are the surrounding streets. On the weekends, you can definitely feel the energy here. Wow, that was incredible. We are back in Park Ayano, um, which is a dog-friendly park that we absolutely love, almost back to our Airbnb. And we just wanted to share what a wild, fun afternoon we had just walking around Centro on a Saturday. There were so many weddings happening. They were like competing bands, competing street performers. It was crazy. There were limos with people partying with that even had like a second camera car just to like film them as they were All driving. All with a sunroof. All with a sunroof and everyone's wearing beautiful pink and lots of colors. It was a lot of fun. That was really amazing. So if you can be here on a Saturday, we highly recommend um, Oaxaca Centro on Saturday just for all of the fun vibes that you're going to get. See? <laughs> All right, after a quick refresh, we are headed to our first mezcal and mole tasting. It is an Airbnb experience from Somalia Daniel, which is actually a recommendation from two of our friends um, who have recently done this. One, our neighbors in Tulum, as well as one of my foodie friends from New York and Miami. She lives between both of them and she was recently here and absolutely loved this experience. So we're super stoked to give it a try. She also gave us the recommendation and the tip that we definitely want to do this at the beginning of your stay in Oaxaca as then when you go to all the other tastings in town, um, we have tons of reservations for um, the tasting menus. We'll know which moles we like and which mezcals we like. So it's definitely a pro tip. And all right, we got to go get a cab because we couldn't find one otherwise. <laughs> On arrival, Daniel is shaking up some refreshing mezcal cocktails to get the evening started. The tasting room is already set up and guests from all over the world are making introductions. For the tasting itself, we enjoy seven mezcals paired with seven moles. Afterwards, the conversations and wine flow, and there may have even been some dancing with the chef to end the evening. Overall, it was a fantastic experience. OMG, we had so much fun at our mezcal and mole tasting. We met so many fun people. Daniel was incredible. So we definitely learned which moles we like and a lot about mezcal. Didn't realize that tequila was basically from a mezcal, um, which is agave plant. Obviously there's 40 different species, so you kind of have to look at mezcal like wine, he said. So, which, you know, you can't just say, oh, I like a mezcal. It's like, oh, what kind? I brought a mezcal, he said. He's like, what kind of mezcal? So yeah, it was really interesting um, to go through that experience and we had a lot of fun. What was your experience at the mezcal and mole tasting? What did you think of it? Uh, I'm very glad that it was well paced that I remember yeah. tasting it, but I learned what I did and didn't like, and uh, I learned that there's a lot more that I don't know, because there's For sure. 41 agave plants in Oaxaca. Alone, alone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. And then, oh yeah, I forgot to mention too that after the tasting was over, everyone was so fun. Like. Um, Daniel brought out wine, and we were drinking red wine, then white wine, oh, no, white wine, then red wine, and then someone bought another bottle of red wine, um, and a lot of people were headed to tacos, but we had to come back and walk Patty, so, <laughs> and also refresh for our evening, so yeah, that was our, our fun experience, um, so yeah, we're definitely feeling it a little bit, but we are off to breakfast um, at our go-to breakfast spot. Um, my breakfast uniform on. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh, Very nice. Coffee right now. Right, let's go. <laughs> 
This is our beautiful go-to breakfast spot, Chipiche, in this beautiful garden. How does it look? Looks good. What do we get? Coffee. And the hotcakes. And the bowl de fruta. As the foodie capital of Mexico, there are so many amazing places to eat and drink in the city. As such, we're gonna do a separate video on the best restaurants and bars in Oaxaca. In the next two weeks, we have so many restaurant reservations and tasting menus coming up that we don't wanna shortchange you with giving you our favorites just yet. For shopping, there are again, tons of super cute boutiques in Centro, but our favorite is Aripo a first-class art gallery, clothing store, and local crafts market. We just got back from our repo. We got some cute things. We got this skull. We got some uh, place settings. And we also got, uh, I, for gift, I got Trey this cute little face mask, uh, but he doesn't know about it, so you have to be quiet. Um, cameraman, don't tell Trey. And for Patty, what do we get? We're going on a walk next. Perhaps one of the coolest neighborhoods in Oaxaca is Yalit Laco. Here you'll find picturesque streets, amazing street art, and another beautiful church. We loved walking around this neighborhood, and it's a must-see area to lose yourself in, just like Centro. So we have been on a roll, making our way through Oaxaca. We've enjoyed an amazing mezcal and mole tasting. And then we've also hit up the main church in Centro. We've walked over to the Halatlaco neighborhood, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, for the incredible street art and restaurants, super cute area there, um, as well as another really pretty church, actually. Um, we've also, of course, eaten and uh, had lots of drinks uh, throughout the entire city, which we love doing. Um, one of our favorites was Tierra del Sol, having lunch on the roof there, as well as heading to Selva for cocktails um, at Los Dos Santes, um, which means dancers. So we're actually gonna be going to see that today, um, the rocks, um, with the dancers on them at Monte Alban, which is a pre-Columbian ancient ruins um, just outside of Oaxaca. This ancient site was an important city in Mesoamerica. Around 500 BC, it became the capital of the Zapotecs for over a thousand years before it was abandoned. It's pretty incredible to see how much of this massive site remains today. Absolutely beautiful day, the weather's gorgeous and uh, we're really enjoying climbing around and exploring Monte Alban. We did see them uh, working on reconstructing some of what probably had fallen over hundreds of years yeah, of earthquaking. For sure. And we actually are here um, on midweek on a Wednesday around 10.30, 11 a.m. And we normally like to come to places that are super popular um, right when they open. It opens at 8 a.m. But we needed our favorite breakfast this morning at Chimpeche. So we did that first and came here and there was literally no line to get in and the space is huge. So you will have plenty of space to yourself here. It is not overcrowded at all, which is incredible. Um, and I, I believe on Sundays we learned that both here at Monte Alban as well as the main church in town, and I think a lot of the exhibits around town are free. Um, so they're really crowded on Sundays, so you'll definitely want to avoid Sunday. But yeah, midweek is really fantastic here at Monte Alban. See? <laughs> All right, let's go explore some more. Let's go. All right, well, we did take the cab on up to the archaeological ruins. And uh, as it turns out, they go up, but they do not come down. <laughs> uh, so we are walking... How long did he say? About an hour uh, back into civilization? I'm not sure if it's just an hour, but yeah, it's, we are, I think it's nine kilometers from Centro, which is six miles. So I think it'll be at least two my two hours. However, it's all downhill because we did take the taxi up. Um, and uh, yeah, the guide we read, oh, there's uh, actually a taxi right here. Uh, I wonder if he'll take us back down. Yeah. <laughs> there we oh go. All right.
<laughs> All right, totally scratched that. We totally scored a taxi back from Monte Alban. Um, he was. <laughs> he, he was like, as we were filming, going, oh, we're going to walk the six miles back. Bam, taxi. So we're super excited. We had him drop us off um, right by the Santo Domingo Church, which is so central to everything. Um, and we're going to pick a spot for lunch. Um, but we're a little early now, so we have like an hour to kill until the restaurants open. But yeah, Santo Domingo is closest to all the restaurants you're going to want to go to. Um, hotels, bars, it's amazing. So, um, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> what was your um, experience um, getting up to Monte Alban today? Um, Any pro tips for us? Yeah, don't stay up late and don't wake up too early when you haven't gotten as good a night's sleep. Are you a little tired? Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, was... Yeah? Yeah. And there's actually no shade whatsoever at Monte Alban as well. So you're definitely gonna wanna get up early before bring it gets too block. hot, bring some block and some water. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's amazing. All right, I know you guys are wondering where this venue is right behind me. This is actually our Airbnb, and I am gonna show you what you can get for $46 a night here in the beautiful city of Oaxaca in Centro, just two blocks away from two amazing dog parks. And now let's head in to our Airbnb, which is directly behind me. Oh, welcome to Casa Maya. It's amazing what $46 a night will get you. Beautiful, isn't it? For sure. This is our Airbnb. We are in love with it for $46. Definitely a great value. We have a kitchen, a couch, a living room, great Wi-Fi, a little balcony out here, a quiet courtyard, as well as a full one bedroom with ensuite. Great location here and uh, excellent value. So we're super stoked that we've extended our stay and we're here I think now for three weeks. So yeah, lots of um, great videos coming up for you guys. Oh, is that what it looks like? <laughs> All right, let's talk about planning a trip here. The Oaxaca airport is super nice and easy to use. If you are also planning a trip down to the Oaxaca coast, which we highly recommend, you can find a flight on Aero Toucan, which is a, pro which is a propeller plane, um, but you can also rent a car, which we highly recommend doing in one direction. We did, and we really enjoyed driving through the scenic mountains. It takes about six hours on 175 to get to Sipalite. On a humorous note, we rented an automatic Jeep and we arrived at the airport to pick up our rental car to drive to the Oaxaca airport and drop it off the next day. We had a small compact manual car, so it definitely made our adventure a little more adventurous. Um, so yeah, we just rolled with it. It's been maybe 10 years since I had driven a manual car, but we had a lot of fun and it was really, really pretty. In terms of the best places to stay, there are a number of luxury boutique properties here in Oaxaca. Our favorite is the Quintana Real, which sits in a 16th century convent. They have an amazing pool and bar as well as restaurant. Across the street, you will find our favorite budget to mid-range option, which is the Salina Oaxaca. Similar to our stay in Puerto Escondido, they have rooms that range from suites down to shared rooms with bunk beds. If you are a light sleeper, you may want to bring earplugs as the rooms are directly above the popular bar and restaurant. Both the Quintana Real as well as Salina Oaxaca are just a stone's throw from the Santo Domingo Church, which is where you're gonna to wanna to stay even if you don't stay at either of these properties or you choose an Airbnb, you'll wanna stay near the church Santo Domingo as it's close to all of the restaurants and bars that you're gonna to wanna to go to. For more on our Oaxaca recommendations, as well as our gay adventures, head over to our website at twogayexpats.com. But before you do, it would be awesome if you could smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, if you have any restaurant recommendations or favorite mezcals, please drop those in the comments section below. We definitely want to make Oaxaca one of our regular gay travel destinations. As always, we appreciate you joining us to explore the best of Oaxaca. We hope you had as much fun as we did. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.